So the next thing we're going to do is have a look at the laser itself, the laser tube. Beautiful. I'll just take this packaging off the laser very carefully. Do you remember me saying to you just now that prior to this machine being shipped out, uh, when it was completed it was fully tested by Thunder Laser engineers and they have left what's known in the scientific world as an engineering test telltale, which is it's actually a piece of uh, acrylic plastic and that is the shape of the beam before it is gone through the lens at the front. That's the Gaussian shape of the beam. If you notice it's a cone shape. So most of the energy of a laser beam is in the center part of the beam. That is why it has gone down deep sharp there and then comes out to a cone effect because la the laser light is, like I say, most of the energy is in the very centre of the beam as that proves. Okay, so it gets less on the way out. That is why it's given a cone uh, tunneling then effect. Uh, incidentally, this was done here at the end of the laser. A laser beam is not hair thin when it comes out of the end of the, the laser tube. It's approximately 8 to 10 millimeters. In this case, I can tell you it's about it's about 10 millimeters the whole beam. But the energy is more concentrated to the center of the beam. I'm going to go into that in more detail as we go forward with videos. So that's that's a very nice touch of proof of testing. So I brought you in for a close look at this. Now it's been Badged as Thunder Laser. Thunder Laser is a very big company. So they have laser tube manufacturers make lasers specifically for them. And they must meet a very, very high criteria. So each laser tube is tested. This is a class 4 laser. And if you notice in the center of the tube, there's a pinky tinge in the middle. That is gold. Now what that does, it helps the laser gases inside to recombine to CO2. Because a laser tube, from the moment it starts working, starts breaking down the CO2 gas inside. So this extends the life of the tube by recombining the CO2 back to CO2 gas. Um, it's stating here that it is it is a 100 watt tube. In other words, you can actually run it at 100 watts. And I, I can tell you for a fact, I know that this is a 120 watt tube. Okay, so this is the end of the laser where the water, uh, water outlet is. And not only does it cool the inside core of the laser, but it also cools the outward lens then of the laser. 
Now this is a very very special beam directional system. This unit here this is a beam combiner. So the little red dot laser fires into this like two-way mirror which then follows the actual laser beam so it combines laser beams. Now this is a red dot laser that you can see and of course the beam that comes out of the laser you can't see at all. It's uh, outside of our light spectrum that we see. Now here's something I want to point out. Wherever cables run through bodywork there is grommets, there's heavy duty cabling connectors and each individual door panel is earthed. These are several things that make this laser meet European and American and Australian standards of electrical machinery. So I just want to show you before I go any further inside the electrical cabinet. That is a thing of beauty. Everything, every wire is labelled, every wire is perfectly laid, it's all in conduit, every Every panel is double earthed. It's beautiful. You would have to go a long, long way to find wiring at this level. Look at these solenoid switches to switch on and off the air blower and all different things, and even to the, the, the blower to the air nozzle high and low pressure. This is an industrial laser that meets all compliance of Euro, American and Australian. It has even has a computerized smart board so you can change the, the time delays of the extraction system so it will come on before you start cutting and when you finish cutting it will continue blowing for another 10 15 seconds a minute whatever you set it to you can program it to set it to, to come on and off at your particular needs it's absolutely beautiful this type of wiring this is what makes it an industrial laser for the world market and another thing too you'll notice these bolts here and you'll notice this line you can unbolt this bottom skirt turn this up on end and put it through a standard doorway that's another neat trick okay we've got some lovely silicon rubber house here to connect up this chiller unit so the outlet from the chiller get it Make sure it's on there all the way, nice and firm. Goes to the inlet of the laser. Push it all the way on, like that. And then the outlet of the laser goes to the inlet. of the cooler or chiller. Now this is the alarm so this allows this connection here to here. 
This allows the chiller to communicate with the controller on the laser. So that just plugs in. There's a little lug here. Sorry, a, a, a channel that lines up with a lug in there. So you can't go wrong. Screw that on. And the same for this smaller one here. Just goes in there like that. Of course, this is the airline in. And the next thing there is the power feed. Uh, everything is fed from the laser because it has solenoids to switch on and off. So you just push this in, like so, and turn till it locks. And that's it. Job's done. All we're going to do now is fill it with distilled water. Okay. You shouldn't use anything other than distilled water. I bought a, a large 20 litre can, but I can't pour it in here. So I've got to pour it in this very clean water watering can. And you've got to be careful you don't overfill this. There's a sight glass at the back. So we put some water in there. Have a look. Not even showing yet. Okay, now what I do after years of using lasers is I get some clear white watery type bleach. Now this is to, sh to make sure that no microbes that's in the pipework is going to grow so just two capfuls like this only two that's all you need So here's the sight glass and you can see that the label is just up near the top of the, the green uh, there which is in the good area. So that's about it for the water. So the next thing I want to hook up is this silent air compressor and it really is quiet. What I'm putting in here is a secondary governor and air cleaner. Okay, which is very important to have with a with a laser. So I'm just going to pop this in here. So then we get our air line, and we just push that in like that. So all you have to do is push it in. Now this little compressor is going to live back in here out of the way. Which will make it even quieter. And I've got enough air line to reach all the way to the inlet which is here. That's all you do is push it in. The air compressor is fitted with, um, should we say, multiple moisture traps, which is which is very important uh, when using in conjunction with a laser. You don't want any moisture going through to the nozzle or the lens of the laser. Not good news at all. So you have a triple bank here of uh, moisture separators. As well as that you have two regulators. So this is the primary regulator and this is the secondary regulator. Now this reg actually regulates the pressure going to the dual air supply 
to your nozzle and we will go more into that as we start using the laser. So now the very last job is to hook up the mains power to the laser. <laughs> 